Hello and welcome to another video. In this week, we are going over how to create simple and efficient sidebars in Dash Plotly so that you can increase the usability of your front-end applications. So let's jump into it. All right, so previously we have created a very simple dashboard in Dash Plotly. It looked similar to this. It was just an H1 heading with a graph element below. And now we want to increase the usability of this dashboard by creating a sidebar here that lets the user switch through different pages. So how do we go about this? Let's jump into the code. This is the previous code. The app element is just a, a dash class with the Dunder name element that's being run as a script over the Flask run server. And the layout was just an HTML div container with a header and a dash graph element with some fixed numbers in it. In order to be able to use a sidebar, we need to change the structure of the dashboard considerably. So let's start with that. First of all, we need to import a couple more modules from Dash. The first of which is the Dash Bootstrap component library. What this is for is basically creating very simple layouts without using any additional code, just straight from this library. This uses the bootstrap components that are used in, in JavaScript. And then we need to import the modules that are used for Dash callbacks. These for our purpose are input and output. With that started, we firstly need to define a couple of CSS elements. For this project, it is simply enough to have them in a dictionary at the beginning of your application. So firstly, we have a sidebar style with a couple of variables. In this case, I will not go over what these specific elements do. You can just try out and change them as you like. Some of them are very straightforward, like background color and color, font size, and others are not so much. Then we also need to define the content style, which is the rest of the element. So you can think of it like the sidebar style is just the sidebar and the content style is all of the remaining space that is available for the application itself. After that, we want to use the external style sheets in the way we style our dashboards. And we do that by calling on the external style sheets variable and using the dash bootstrap component themes. And in this case, we use the bootstrap theme. With that done, we can start with creating the sidebar itself. So let me paste this here and we can start with what the sidebar is. So the sidebar is basically a div element with a couple more elements inside. Firstly, we have a header in this case, a main header and a subheader, and those are separated by horizontal lines. Then you have a navigation element that is coming from the dash bootstrap components library. And within this navigation bar or nav navigation element, you have various different links. These dash bootstrap component links are references to a different URLs. And in this case, we have three of them home, page one, and page two. These are the actual names that are referenced in the dash sidebar. And these are the URL paths that they link to. So whenever you click the nav link element, you are being forwarded to uh, this URL. So we have to define this URL later. So with that out the way, we have now created the sidebar with all of the, its different elements. Let's create the content variable. The content variable is what is being displayed later on. This is a app callback, but we will get to the reference later. Then we need to also create a new app layout. So in this case, oops, the app has to always be in front of that. So first call the app and then the content pane and the app.layout function. Obviously. We will remove this for now. I will go over this a little bit later and with that out of the way, we can now create the function that is being used to reference to the different URLs. So firstly, you use a dash decorator that is app.callback. This handles all of the callbacks. So when you press a button, that actually something happens. 
and you feed this app callback decorator with two different classes, the output class and the input class. The input obviously is what goes into the function and the output what comes out. So we have this render page content function. It doesn't matter what you name it, but it is very self-explanatory and you need to give it a path name and the path name is then what is referenced. So slash as um, you have maybe seen earlier is what references here to the home page. So nothing is home, just the slash. So here we have the handler that switches to if the path name is nothing, then return something. So let's say if you go to the home page, it should display this is the home page. Then we also want to include a second page that is called with if this is not the case, then a lift. We have the page one and it should actually, oops, have. <laughs> Um, should display the h1 this is page one so let's run this function and see if it works as intended let's go into the browser and as we can see we have now a home page we have a page one and we have nothing on page two yet because as you have seen we have not yet configured the second page let's do something different for the second page with the second page i would actually like to display this graph element as is done here so we don't just want to um, show some text but we actually want to show a useful element a graph so let's do that so we do the same thing as we did with all of the other references we have another elif statement and in this case what happens if the url is page two and we return an html element it's also a diff again but in this case we will give it some more elements so we will give it a, an h1 heading to see what is being displayed. So let's say it displays, this is my first Python dashboard. And then we have another div element, in this case, however, with a dash core component graph element. This graph element then should be rendered only on the second page when being referred to that URL. So with that, we can delete the old code and the old dashboard with no sidebar. And if everything went correctly, we should now see a home page, a first page and a second page with the new header and the graph element. So if this has helped you to create better dashboards in Python with Dashplotly, please consider liking or subscribing. And in any case, have a great week. Bye bye.